Hi everyone, my name is Hassain and in this video we are going to talk about Federated Identity Pattern. Federated Identity comes under security category of cloud design patterns and it's all about delegating authentication to an external identity provider so we don't have to implement an authentication module in our applications. And we are going to see this in more details in this video. Now let's dive straight into our example to help us understand this better. Let's say that you have a group of employees in your organization that need to access some internal applications as well as external applications. And let's say at this point, we don't have any authentication being handled using Active Directory. So each of these applications has its own authentication module so they can authenticate the different requests coming from your employees. We are all know this is not the best thing that could be done in here, but let's assume this is the case just to help me get my point across. And our employees will need an access to these different applications. And imagine what would be the life for them if they need to remember different username and password for each of these applications in order to get authenticated with. So we have three challenges we need to fix here. And first one, we have already mentioned it, that the user would need to remember different username and passwords for different applications in order to be authenticated with them. And in some big organizations, these applications could reach hundreds of applications. And imagine what would be the life for the employees if they need to maintain and manage hundreds of different usernames and passwords. So this is our first challenge. And our second challenge, we are exposing a security vulnerability. Imagine when a certain employee leaves the organization and we need to disable their access to all of these applications at once. And as I mentioned already, these applications could reach hundreds of applications in certain organizations. So it's going to take a bit of time till the application admins go through all of these apps and disable the certain employee access to all of them. Which might take few hours or even days until we have disabled their access to all of the applications being used within the organization, whether they are internal applications or external applications. Also, we are missing a really important point, the audit or the assurance. If we want to be sure that a certain employee doesn't have access anymore to a certain application, there is no way for us to assure this unless to go manually and check these different applications to make sure that this certain employee doesn't have access anymore to access these applications, which is going to be a nightmare for the application admins. And the third challenge we have in here is we have a complicated user management process. From one side, the employee will have to communicate with 100 different app admins to provide him with an access to the application. And from the application admin side, they have to maintain these different requests coming from different employees to grant them access to different applications. So we are all agreed this is not the best thing we could implement in our organization, right? So these are the challenges, and now let's see how can we use the federated identity pattern to resolve these problems. Let's clean this up, and first thing we are going to do in here is to introduce one Azure component. In this case, let's say it's an Azure Active Directory, it could be any other identity provider. So our employees are going to be authenticated with Azure Active Directory. And by doing this, we have ticked off many boxes at the same time. Most importantly, we don't have to implement an authentication module for all of these applications because we handed it over to Azure Active Directory to do it for us. So it's going to make the implementation time faster and quicker for different applications we implement within the organization. Since we don't have to implement an authentication module anymore within the application. And by doing this, by delegating the authentication from your internal applications to the Azure Active Directory, you are going to make a really clear separation between authentication and authorization. And this is a really big challenge for us, because in most cases, some people prefer to mix them together or don't really sense what is the difference between authentication and authorization. So if you are going to hand the authentication to Azure Active Directory, and maybe the authorization to a completely different service like Azure Key Vault. You have decoupled both authentication and authorization and make them really separate and decoupled from each other. Also by doing this, by handing over the authentication to an Azure Active Directory, 
our app admin doesn't need to manage the user management for different apps anymore because we handed it over to someone else to prove the user identity, which is going to make the user management process much easier and efficient. So what are our options of using the identity provider? Are we only restricted to use Azure Active Directory? The answer is no. You can use your corporate directory or even on-premise federated service, or also you could use any identity provider that could provide you with STS token, security token service. So you could use Yahoo, Facebook, Microsoft, Google, or Amazon account to get you this STS token while you are handing over the authentication module to them. Now let's have a closer look at what's happening behind the scene between one of these applications and Azure Active Directory in order to authenticate users with Azure Active Directory. And I've got this diagram from Microsoft documentation which explains it really well. And the first step we need to do is to build a trust relationship between our application and the identity provider. So our application would trust this identity provider to send the security token service to the application. And then when an employee wants to authenticate with our application, then they are going to get directed to the identity provider, which is Azure Active Directory in our example. And then the Azure Active Directory is going to send back STS token that the customer or employee can use to communicate with our service securely. Now our service doesn't need to worry about the authentication module anymore because we handed it over to Azure Active Directory to do all of the authentication work is required and all what we are care about is receiving a valid SDS token when the customer or when the employee is interacting with our system or our service. And this model is called the claim-based authentication because we can get Active Directory to provide more attributes in the user token to be used within our application. Maybe the user role or certain permissions or certain attributes that might be required in a certain application. Now let's come back to our three challenges that we have talked about before and see if this pattern is going to resolve them or not. First, the challenge we had is the bad user experience because the user used to manage different usernames and passwords for different applications. And by using this pattern, the user only will have to remember one username and password for their corporate directory, which is going to make the life much easier for them. Second, the challenge, the security vulnerability. If a certain employee leaves the organization, it's going to take us hours, if not days, to disable their account across all applications we have. Now, when we are using Azure Active Directory or any other identity provider, we can simply disable their account on the identity provider with a click of a button and they lose access to all of these applications we have in the organization, or maybe external applications as well. And the third challenge we had is the application admins would need to do a lot of work to assign or authenticate the users with different applications. Now, by using the identity provider, application admins doesn't need to do this anymore. This is what this pattern is about and how we can use it to tick off all of these boxes we have mentioned before. Also, it's good to mention that handing over authentication to Azure Active Directory is not the only thing you could do. You could actually offload many services from your application or from your application code to other Azure components to make the life easier for your application. So for example, this is one of the diagrams I've got from the gateway of loading pattern. And I'm going to put a link for this video if you are interested to review it. The gateway of loading pattern is primarily about offloading certain modules from your application to other Azure components so you get to do less customization in your code. And in this example, we could offload authentication and authorization and token validity to Azure Active Directory. And also you could hand over the encryption to a key vault, throttling limit and token validation or SSL certificate to API management. Also, you could have an SSL certificate management for Azure Load Balancer. Also, you can offload the logging and monitoring to application insights and log analytics. So this is just to give you an idea that the authentication is not the only module that you could offload from your application code. You could offload many things even not mentioned in this diagram. This is just to give you an example or an idea to leverage what Azure has already provided for you before you start implementing it in your own code. 
Now let's talk about some considerations you need to keep in mind when you use this pattern. And the first thing you need to be aware of that authentication with an identity provider could be a single point of failure for your architecture. And if we take an Azure Active Directory as an example, and we look at what happened in the availability of Azure Active Directory globally twice this year, yes, it was a short period of time, but this is just to give you an idea that if the Azure Active Directory or your identity provider wasn't available, it will stop all of the authentication to all of your applications until the identity provider is back online again. And this is a really good consideration that you need to communicate with your business stakeholders. Yes, by offloading the authentication module from your application code to identity provider, it's going to provide a single sign-on features and really good user experience, but they need to be aware of what might happen wrong in terms of the availability of the Azure Active Directory or the identity provider. Also by using an identity provider is going to offer you to have a role-based access control, which is going to allow you to have a more granular level of control of permissions. Also, you need to be aware of an important point. We mentioned already, if you are using an Azure Active Directory, you can specify which attribute you need to send along with the STS token. This might sound okay if this is the internal identity provider that you own in your organization, but you need to be aware of that the external identity providers doesn't provide much information or much flexibility. In most cases, they might provide you only with the email address or the name of the user. And you need to be aware of that when you are going to authenticate with an external identity provider. Also, in some cases, your application might have trusted multiple identity providers to send the STS token. And if this is the case, you need to detect which identity provider needs to be used to direct user for authentication. And this is called home realm discovery. Now let's see when you should use this pattern. When you want to implement a single sign-on in your organization, it's going to be way better and easier for the employees to remember just the corporate username and password in order to authenticate with 100 different applications that are used within your organization. Also, it's going to make the security management much easier for you. If one employee leaves the organization, you can disable their access to all applications with a click of a button. Also, you can use this pattern to authenticate employees in your organization and your business partners without creating accounts in your Active Directory. By having these federated identity, that's going to work between both of your identity providers. Also, as we have already said before, many SaaS applications now offer federated identity as a way for authentication in their services which is going to allow it easy for other users or other companies to integrate with them and use their identity providers to authenticate with these different SaaS applications. Now we are coming to the end of this video. I hope now it's clear for you what the federated identity pattern is about. What are the benefits of using it? What are the challenges it tries to solve? What are the different considerations you need to be aware of when you implement this pattern? I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any question, please put it in the comments below. And thanks for watching.